That sound means you're back on the air with the restaurant brokers, Eric and Robin Gagnon. We've had guests with big hearts join us for the show, and now it's time for Restaurant Reality. We're here to give you the unbridled truth and inside scoop. Now, Eric, the mission of the Giving Kitchen actually serves the industry. The reality is, though, most restaurants really do connect through their community with charitable efforts. You're correct, Robin. And there are so many great examples of how the restaurant community has a heartbeat on the needs of the community, and they work to give back. They range from the big guys on the block, as we talked about earlier, the Ronald McDonald's Foundation and the well-known charity, to someone on the corner who simply turns over a percentage of his sales at the end of the night for a local organization or a family in need. But there are kind of some parameters you should set around that, I think, as a restaurant owner. I mean, let's just be realistic here, because when you're choosing a charity, let's make sure that it matches to your customers. For example, if you have a breakfast pay- place on the ocean that primarily attracts restaurantees when you're think- or retirees, when you're thinking about, okay, who is going to align best with me as a customer, it wouldn't necessarily be a good fit to tie into a charity that helps bikers that are in recovery from wrecks, but that might be good for a biker bar. Correct. I mean, that's right. I mean, you have to put a little bit of thought because like uh, Naomi said today on the show, a lot of people every day will come to you from Little League Baseball to hospital to cancer to Leukemia Society and various people. But you have to understand your customer because you are the one kind of hosting the event, cementing, participating. You're, you're, you, know, you may pass the hat among your team. You may donate some money because it's a cost near to your heart. But if you cannot raise an amount of money that's significant or your customers can relate to you or tell your story, then it probably won't work. And I think, too, you also have to sort of have that guard up to make sure you're supporting a charity that is reputable. Obviously, the Giving Kitchen is a fabulous example of a great charity here in Atlanta that is, but you should be looking for those that are 501c3s as designated by the IRS so that when people make a charitable contribution, it's tax exempt. Correct, and do a little research. Go to their website, and sometimes uh, some of the large organizations sometimes have more than one mission, and maybe sometimes the missions may not be aligned with that mission here you care a lot about, but as overall organization, it may not be something that you or your clientele will relate to, so it may be something that could backfire on you. you got to be very careful how you support and who you support and how you create the, the event and how you raise the money and how you hand out the money because, like Robin said, if it's not a 501c3, uh, Check with your CPAs and your attorneys, but there may be some tax liability involved in you uh, raising that money. And so know up front who that charity is. They should be willing to share some information with you. And so getting this right is really pretty important because if it backfires on you, if you happen to give money to an organization that wasn't on the up and up or it wasn't a 501c3, it could create a, a bigger public relations issue than you have the ability to actually solve. It'll backfire entirely. Correct. I mean, we've seen so over the years some people having, uh, you know, mismanaging fund, things like that it becomes national news. And you just did, you know, big fundraisers for these people and the people in your community is like, oh, my God, we donated you know, to this place and it could impact you negatively. But this is all about feeling good, making work, you know, for your community and giving back to the industry in this case here, which was very great because it's very rare. I mean, this is an industry we all know there's not a lot of benefits attached to your your position unless you go into upper management and to some larger operations. So uh, the person that, you know, does break his ankle playing soccer, you can't work. He's not sitting at a desk. So if he needs a few dollars, a giving kitchen is here for that. This is a wonderful within the industry community. For those of you out there listening, definitely reach out to them. Put a poster in your in your own kitchen, in your own break room for your employees where they say, hey, here's a number to help. It doesn't cost you anything. It looks like you care for your customers. And I also think it's not only just share their good works, but share all of your good works. Make sure you tell people what's happening and who you're supporting on your social media channels. Engage with your customer base so that they're you're boosting attendance at these nights when you do things that would be promoting the charity or or where a percentage would go to them and put uh, tent cards on your tables, put icons on your menu. You know, really, if you're going to engage with a charity, go all in and make that one charity very important to your business and share with others. Yeah, because it's all about the story. That's what's important. How many times you go to a grocery store or to a national retailer and say, would you like to donate a dollar for this such, such and such cause? And you're like, 
No, thank you. I don't really know. You don't know what the cause is. But if you have a tabletop or your server tonight or your chef tonight is going to come in the dining room and say, this is why uh, we heard Jennifer's story today, very touching. Her husband passed away from cancer. This is how can you say no to something like that? I mean, how can you not say this is a great idea? This is an inspiration, turning a tragedy into a huge success. I mean, our ambitions, our goals and our dreams are moving forward and it will live on to help many more that will have similar tragedies or, or in the future. So if you share that passion with the the customers or the people that are writing the, the, the check or giving their credit card tonight, you will get success. But if you just say, would you like to donate to, to a charity to help restaurant people? Uh, the answer is probably going to be very good, Robin, right? Right, right. And, you know, don't forget, too, those of you listening, you could always start your own charity with the help of a good CPA or an attorney. If you have a cause that you're passionate about, I mean, this um, the Giving Kitchen saw something that didn't exist at all in the industry, and so they formed a 501c3. And, um, you know, that is incredibly difficult to do, but you can actually get that up and running with the help of a good business attorney and a, a good CPA and get yourself into a tax-exempt status. Just remember, it's something you're going to have to invest in long term. I mean, it's not a one-and-done type of thing. The foundation will need to be fed with your efforts over time and you'll need to establish a board and um, lots of different other things i'm sorry it's a business on its own it's a totally separate business that you're starting from the ground up so do not just say oh i got my 501c3 status i I can just raise money and pass it along to someone else so do look at the consequences but some of you out there may be at that point or there may be something you're very passionate about you may have started an event uh, we have some of our customers started an event a few years ago raising five thousand dollars and today they're raising two three hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money maybe you do want to set up a 501c3 and and have a better uh, performance and also do greater things with the money that you're raising to help directly the people that you are caring for the bottom line is there are just so many ways to help. And then, on the other hand, there are so many people in need. So I hope that you've listened to today's show with an open heart and will think about that as you move forward and make business decisions that align with your heart, as we see so many people in the industry do. And we've talked a lot about ways to help others. I want to take just one quick second and remind you that you can also help yourself. If you're out there listening, you haven't gotten involved in this industry yet, you're thinking that the restaurant industry is somewhere you want to be, You can visit our website and take a look at some of our latest listings. And some of those include, we've got a burger restaurant in Marietta. It's on the market for $199,000. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's gourmet burger and it's making money. Uh, You know, the burger craze, as we know right now, is pretty hot. There's a lot of people. This is not a a, a chain. This is your own. So you could put your own stamp on it, put your own twist to it. Uh, High high average income with a three-mile radius of the restaurant. The average income per family is over $120,000. We have listings uh, across the country, Eric, and I don't know that people always remember that, but we um, have a listing in Texas, a great little grill. It's just a little mom-and-pop place, dirt cheap rent, only $3,450 a month rent, and it's on the market for about $110,000. Yeah, it's in, uh, can we can we say the city there, Robin? Yeah, sure. Austin, Texas, one of my favorite cities. This is awesome. Music, technology, incubator, young people, cool, hip, a great place. Texas is always at the top as for entrepreneurs, for future growth. Uh, for those of you who maybe want to think about moving, this could be a great winner. For $110,000, you can't even build a restaurant, guys, for that money. Yeah, all of our listings are online. You know that. They're at WeSellRestaurants.com, and you'll also find links to all of our uh, restaurant radio shows as long as well as links to our social media. So I want to remind you to check us out on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Sell Restaurants. Visit our Facebook page, where we also vo- post, excuse me, post videos from today's show, and that's at Facebook.com backslash WeSellRestaurants. This is Eric and Robin Gagnon. We are the Restaurant Barkers.